welcome back. In the last video we were uh, discussing about the applications of Laplace transform to uh, ordinary differential equations when the right hand side or the forcing function uh, is not uh, a continuous function. We have seen uh, examples of uh, piecewise continuous functions. So when you have uh, ordinary differential equations uh, with uh, forcing function where this right hand side uh, is uh, impulse function, uh, when you, uh, you can also solve by Laplace transform technique. So when you apply the Laplace transform, uh, you need to know what is the Laplace transform of this delta function. So, so before I do this, uh, what is the delta function? Delta function, some sense you can see that uh, it's a limit of uh, these f n of x. Those are uh, step uh, kind of step functions. As you see that it's it's one everywhere. If you consider delta function as usual, uh, it's uh, let me write separately. So if you uh, think of delta function as uh, I have defined earlier as a limit of uh, f n of x in a weak sense, as n goes to infinity, these f n's are uh, at zero. You, you make a, a step like this and 0 here. So this is your function 0 here and from between uh, minus, uh, minus 1 by n to 1 by n and you have this is f n of uh, x as n or rather 2 by n because this length is 2 by n. So uh, here n by 2, okay. So this length is, uh, this length of this interval is uh, 2 by n. So this you multiply with n by 2. So I give this one so that the area is that this area is equal to 1, is equal to 1, okay. Area is uh, equal to 1. So in that sense, so, so no only weak sense, weak convergence, weak sense you have to take this. That means, that means uh, on an average this is true. So that means fn of fn x and fx you integrate from minus infinity to infinity. You take this limit and goes to infinity. This is actually minus infinity to infinity delta x fx dx. So if you actually calculate this one with any fx, if you if you know known fx so is going to be, you, you can see that this is going, to, this you can calculate because this is a known, uh, this is the usual, usual function, this is the given uh, function, any function for, uh, for every continuous function. So let us take uh, for a, for continuous function f of x, okay. So if you take this one, you can see that this value if you calculate it will be, it is going to be f of 0. So in that sense, uh, that is what uh, we have defined as a delta function in, your, in the earlier videos when we do the Fourier transforms. So in this case, uh, when, you cal when you want to calculate uh, Laplace transform uh, of a delta function, so Laplace transform is defined from the 0 to infinity. So because it is a 0 to infinity or a 0 domain, uh, let us consider your impulse at uh, let us say L. So you have a delta of x minus l. This as a limit of this f n of x. Now f n so f n of x as uh, here. This is between minus uh, l minus one by n to l plus one by n. So so here zero to l minus one by n zero functionally zero, and between this to this minus l minus one by n to l plus one by n, the function value is uh, n by two. Okay, let me write fn of x equal to n by 2. Otherwise, outside this, this is 0, 0 to infinity. So if you consider like this all your fn's, you start with n equal to 1 onwards, n equal to 1, 2, 3 onwards. So this limit as n goes to infinity, this is your uh, definition of delta function. So when you apply uh, Laplace transform of this, uh, if, you, if you apply the Laplace transform, Laplace transform of this delta function of, uh, let's I use uh, uh, t. If you want, I can also use t as a variable. Uh, this is your t. If I use t here, so your delta function t minus l uh, as a function of s, you need. So this is a by definition zero to infinity delta of uh, t minus l uh, e power minus s t dt. So as you see, this is same as because uh, this uh, this delta function is uh, it's valid. Uh, it is only valid as a limit of n goes to infinity, it is defined positive side. So when you consider this negative side minus infinity infinity, you can think of uh, same because outside this is 0, zero to, minus, 0 to minus infinity or minus infinity to 0, this function is 0. So I can include here e power minus st dt. So this is, this you already know as uh, value of this t equal to l, you have to put it here. So e power minus s l. 
So, that is your uh, Laplace transform of uh, this delta function when the when uh, so when this impulse is at uh, point L inside. So, you can think of uh, take the limit uh, taking limit uh, taking L goes to 0 what we see is the Laplace transform of delta function of t is equal to e power uh, this is limit L goes to 0. So, if you do this is going to be 1. So, this you can easily see straightforward way. So, we, but if you if you actually see directly why we get a confusion here is uh, uh, is uh, if you directly look at this one this is actually 0 to infinity delta of t e power minus st dt. Earlier we have seen that uh, when, when you have a delta impulse function at 0 delta function from 0 to infinity we have seen that its value is e actually equal to half of the value at this point. So, that is 1. So, this is half ok. When you consider this as 1 we have seen that this is equal to half because of uh, this, uh, this contribution at half half uh, ok. So, delta function this is only you have taken half. So, what my delta function is if you have a 0 here if you take the function like this as your uh, minus uh, 1 by n to 1 by n f n of x equal to uh, 2 by n. If I consider this as running from n is running from 1 to 3 onwards then this is true then this is actually true half ok. So, when you take the Laplace transform you see that when you put t equal to 0 so it is going to be half this is this is actually true ok. If your delta function is is this this is the limit of all these sequence which are spilling over to negative side. But you, you do not have a domain here so you do not have domain. So, what my domain uh, for the Laplace transform here your delta function as actually delta function is a limit of this f n of x some g n of x let me call these are your f n s g n of x are like uh, this is your 0. So, I consider uh, this is your this is 0 to 1 by n uh, other outside 0. So, it is n f n g n of x equal to n n is from 1 to 3 onwards. So, if I choose like this uh, g n of t ok g n of t g n of t is uh, n here value is n between 0 to n 1 by n outside 1 by n to infinity this is 0. So, if you take like this then what happens and uh, what you have to choose is uh, if we choose uh, such a way that why I choose this is here n so that integral this area is uh, area is 1 area equal to 1. So, so you have uh, integral of delta t between 0 to t dt is always maintained as 1. So, because of this you see that uh, uh, if I calculate Laplace transform of delta t uh, of s which is which is equal to uh, Laplace which is 0 to infinity delta of t e power minus s t dt ok. So, this I can write it as uh, 0 to infinity a limit of this g n of uh, t ok. This is uh, this means what this means if I multiply e power s t which is a continuous function. So, this means this is actually same as uh, integral 0 to infinity delta of t uh, e power minus s t dt is equal to limit as n goes to infinity 0 to infinity uh, g n of t e power minus s t dt ok. This is a weak sense the, on an average this is true that is the meaning of uh, this convergence because this is not usual function ok. So, because of that so this I write it as a limit of n goes to infinity uh, g n of uh, t e power minus s t dt. Now, I know what is my g n of t g n of t is n between 0 to 1 by n limit n goes to infinity between 0 to 1 by n this is n e power minus s t dt outside is 0. So, this is equal to limit n goes to infinity and if you n comes out of the integral because nothing to do with this uh, you have uh, e power minus s t by minus s you apply the limits and you have this limit n goes to infinity times n times this is uh, when you put uh, 0 t equal to 0 that is uh, 1 minus 1 by s minus so rather 
n by s comes out. So, you have 1 0 thing because of minus is 1 and uh, when I substitute 1 by n that is e power minus s by n. So, this is what is the, this limit if you look at this uh, how do I get this limit? This limit I rewrite as uh, uh, I rewrite as a limit of n goes to infinity uh, 1 minus e power minus s by n into divide by uh, divide by s by n. If n goes to infinity s by n whatever may be s is fixed constant. So, s is s by n goes to 0. So, this is same as limit s by n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity s, s by n goes to 0 you have 1 minus e power minus s by n by s by n. So, if I replace this as uh, some x s by n as some uh, variable s. So, let us write this as x x goes to 0 1 minus e power minus x by x. So, this is as x goes to 0 this is like uh, L hospital rule you can use 0 by 0 form. So, if you apply this is same as limit x goes to 0 if you differentiate this it is going to be this is 0 and this is going to be simply e power minus x. So, this is nothing but it is 1. So, that is how you get your uh, Laplace transform of this, but you have to use your uh, delta function as a limit of a sequence of usual functions. There are step functions like this. Uh, so, that so, so that uh, it is not spilling over to a negative side, negative side there is no spilling okay, of your uh, uh, sequence of functions. So, this is how you show this uh, delta function Laplace uh, transform of delta function as a function of s is simply 1. Okay. So, this is how we sh show this one. So, once you have this now we can apply uh, this technique uh, uh, Laplace transform technique to uh, to the uh, to solve some ordinary differential equations when the right hand side is having impulse function. So, let us solve this uh, some examples uh, solve y square uh, solve y double dash plus pi square y equal to delta function of t minus 1. So, with this uh, initial conditions of course, t is positive d square y by d t square. Okay. So, and uh, y at 0 e given as 1 and y dash at 0 equal to 0. So, when you have uh, something like this, this may come in the applications of when you see these kind of problems in the application, you cannot usually solve by uh, differential equation methods. So, you can apply that case you can apply this uh, Laplace transform technique. So, if you apply this s square y bar of s minus s times y at 0 that is 1 and then you have a minus y dash of 0 that is 0. So, this is for y double dash plus pi square y bar of s and delta function of this. So, if you apply this uh, delta function e power minus uh, simply s. Okay. If you apply the Laplace transform of delta function t minus 1 simply e power minus s t equal to 1. So, you have to replace. So, this is what is uh, from by Laplace transform. Laplace transform. So, you can see that y bar of s you can write as a product of uh, s square plus pi square equal to s plus e power minus s. So, y bar of s equal to s plus e power minus s by s square plus pi square. So, this gives me inversion gives now inversion inversion gives inversion will give uh, y of t s s over uh, s over s by. So, this you can write it as s by s square plus pi square plus uh, e power. So, you can write this as uh, e power minus s 1 over uh, s square plus pi square. So, I use this as pi here so that you have 1 by pi. Okay. So, just constant. So, how do I uh, how do I get this inversion for this this is simply cos pi t this is 1 by pi times this is this is uh, this will give <coughs> uh, h of uh, t minus 1. So, that e power minus s is accounted and this is the Laplace transform of uh, 
this is Laplace transform of sin pi t, sin pi t. So, you have to write sin this into sin pi of t minus 1. So, Laplace transform of this is e power minus s times Laplace transform of sin pi t which is this. Okay. So, that is what exactly your solution for p positive. So, this is a piecewise continuous uh, piecewise uh, piecewise continuous function which is a solution for this uh, problem ordinary differential equation. Let us solve one more problem. <coughs> if I use uh, y double dash minus 4 y dash plus 3 y equal to 2 t plus 1 times delta function of t minus half t is positive. And then what you have is uh, y at 0 equal to 0, y dash at 0 equal to 2. So, what is the solution here? You apply the same technique. So, application of uh, Laplace transform gives uh, s square y bar of s minus s times y at 0 that is 0 goes and you have minus y dash of 2 that is 2 minus 4 times for this term minus 4 times s y bar of s minus y at 0 that is 0 okay? and then plus 3 y bar of s equal to. Now, if you apply this uh, right hand side 0 to infinity 2 t plus 1 times delta function of t minus half e power minus s t dt. So, delta function for this whole function. So, wherever t is there you put uh, t equal to half. So, when you put t equal to half this is 2 and this is going to be e power minus uh, s by 2 and this uh, left hand side you have uh, y bar of s as s square minus 4 s plus 3 and this is equal to 2 plus 2 plus this one to bring it to the other side this part. So, you have this. So, this gives me y bar of s as 2 over this you can write it as s minus uh, s minus 3 times s minus 1. If you do like this you get this uh, this product is this and plus 2 over uh, s minus 3 times s minus 1 times e power minus s by 2. So, this you have to use the partial fractions and get your solution. So, how do I use this partial fractions 2 over uh, so let me write 1 by s minus 3 minus 1 by s minus 1 then it is 2 right that is actually this this is a partial fraction. So, you have what 2 you see this is also you can write the same way s minus 3 minus 1 by s minus 1 times e power minus s by 2. So, this is your y bar of s. So, Laplace inversion gives Laplace inversion gives solution y of t as 1 by s minus 3 is e power 3 t minus e power t. And then uh, here this is uh, because of this you have h of uh, t minus half and then this this part this part is actually uh, e power uh, 3 t minus half okay this into this plus again again for this again you do the same thing this is again going to be uh, h of uh, t minus half for this part and 1 by s minus 1 you have e power t in the place of t you have to write t minus half. So, this is uh, exactly what you have uh, as a solution. Okay. So, this is your solution for t positive. So, this is how you get your solution uh, of that uh, ordinary differential equation with right hand side being some complicated function involving the delta function. So, polynomial times delta function you can just or any continuous function times delta function uh, you can uh, apply this uh, Laplace transform and get your solution. So, as a final example let me do one more example uh, before we end up, wind up these uh, applications of Laplace transform. So, let me give you one more. So, y double dash plus y dash which is equal to t minus 1 minus delta of t minus 2 y of 0 is 0 y dash of 0 is 0. So, let me quickly solve this. Uh, 
as the same technique s square y bar of s minus uh, s times y at 0 that is 0 minus y dash of 0 both are 0 so this will contribute only to this other one is y dash is uh, s times y bar of s minus y at 0 that is 0 this is equal to this one will be e power uh, minus s and this is going to be e power minus 2s. So, you have y bar of s as 1 by s times s plus 1 e power minus s minus e power minus 2s. So, this you apply uh, this you can write it as 1 by s minus 1 by s plus 1 times e power minus s minus e power minus 2s. So, you have uh, y bar of s this. So, inversion gives inversion gives a solution y of t as 1 by s times e power minus s is uh, h of uh, t here uh, as a t minus 1 because of e power minus s and 1 by s is uh, Laplace transform of uh, 1 right. So, you have a 1 here. So, 1 as a function of t minus 1 itself is 1 ok that is this and you have minus and e power this is e power minus 2 s you can write it as h of t minus 2 and again 1 is that. So, you have uh, h of t minus 1 and t minus 2 for the first term into the whole thing ok and then other one is minus uh, h of uh, t minus 1 for this and 1 by s plus 1 is 1 by s uh, plus 1 is uh, e power minus t. So, you have e power minus in the place of t, t minus 1. So, Laplace transform of this is e power minus uh, e power minus s for this and Laplace transform of e power minus t that is 1 by s plus 1. And the same way this minus minus plus now here h of t minus 2 and here uh, again 1 by s plus 1 you have to write e power minus t in the place of t you have to put t minus 2. So, this is your solution of uh, this problem. So, you can directly apply your Laplace transform technique and uh, get your solutions. So, this is these are the applications uh, I would like to uh, present to you uh, for ordinary differential equations, PDEs and in, uh, integral equations and you can evaluate some integrals ok. So, we will move on uh, we will close this uh, Laplace transform you can now your uh, you can use uh, Laplace transform to solve uh, you can apply your Laplace transform and uh, make use in your applications to solve some uh, uh, differential equations or integral equations in your uh, in, in, in physics and engineering problems ok. So, let us move on to uh, so let us do uh, z transforms ok z transforms. So, what is z transform? So, we will discuss uh, as a final component we will discuss uh, uh, z transforms in one or two uh, uh, or maximum three, 3 to 4 videos uh, we will just give you a, a brief uh, introduction and uh, its applications of uh, z transforms. Z transform is basically uh, a discrete version of Laplace transform. So, what we have seen so far is uh, you started with uh, Fourier transform of a periodic signal and then you went to uh, you defined what is a Fourier transform of uh, non periodic signal which you actually derived it is a transform and its inversion you derived based on the periodic signal. So, that is how you derive the thing ok you derived the Fourier transform and then uh, Laplace transform you def you derived based on the Fourier transform. So, you use the Fourier integral theorem to derive the uh, Laplace transform. Now, this z transform is a simple uh, discrete version of uh, Laplace transform. So, we use a Laplace transform uh, and its inverse transform to get uh, not uh, inverse transform just use the Laplace transform which is defined as a continuous time which is between 0 to infinity. So, in this uh, between 0 to infinity you take only discrete points discrete uh, data for example, if your function uh, f of t is given from 0 to infinity. So, uh, as a continuous variable a continuous function a continuous variable t you have uh, for which you have a Laplace transform and now instead of f of t you consider uh, values of f of t at some discrete values for example, uh, uh, let us say 0 uh, t at 2t, 3t and so on. So, t is a fixed constant ok. So, if you do like that uh, you have a discrete data. So, when you when you want to so, we want to see this this is called a sample. So, you have a sample discrete sample. 
So, you can represent this sample as a continuous function in terms of uh, impulses that means uh, in terms of delta functions okay. So, we will see how we get this if your function f of x is uh, given as uh, f of t let us say f of t uh, t is from 0 to infinity. So, t is from 0 to infinity if it is given if I want to choose only from uh, 0 and uh, as a discrete uh, uh, sample let me take the sample uh, discrete uh, values if you take as a constant. So, let us take t. So, this is your t and so that this is the same uh, interval you can take uh, consider this 2 t 3 t and so on and so on you can consider as a sample. So, you have uh, f of 0 f of t f of uh, 2 t and so on. So, this is your uh, sample a discrete sample okay a discrete sample and uh, this is your discrete sample. How do I represent if I want to use for this you can you can represent this as a uh, so sample function. So, let me write as a continuous function if you if you if you want to represent it as a continuous variable I uh, will I will represent this data as a sample uh, function okay. So, let me write it as f star of t as a function of t now this as uh, sigma n is from 0 to infinity because they have infinite data n is from 0 to infinity n equal to 0 you have f of n t and n equal to 0 f of 0 and you have a delta function that is t minus n t you can have like this. So, so this represents a delta this, uh, this so you have uh, this represents a continuous variable for every t belongs to 0 to infinity, but what it does is uh, when you when you consider this uh, minus infinity inf uh, let us say. Uh, so, if you if you choose this one uh, let us let us let us integrate from 0 to infinity to f star of t dt if I use this because of this delta function and what you get is simply f of 0 uh, f of 0 plus uh, f of so you so delta function at 0 n equal to 0 again the way I have chosen earlier these are the limit of the only one side okay. So, this is not spilling over to the negative side. So, that when you have this when you apply this uh, integration for uh, n equal to 0. So, what you have is only f of 0 f of 0 delta of t dt. So, you have f of 0 f of uh, uh, f of t and sum of all these uh, uh, samples you will get as a sum you will get ok. <coughs> so, when you actually uh, take the data data Im instantaneously you take. So, you basically you have uh, you will have uh, some time to get this. So, this is not exactly the point means it is not exactly the point it is some uh, neighborhood of this point exact point. So, in that sense you represent this as a delta functions and when you consider so you can you, you represent this as a sample function as a continuous variable you can represent this data as, as a sample function which are in terms of this delta functions. So, if you if you want to have a data you can get back your data by integrating over this t variable. So, that is what you see by representing this as a delta function ok sum of all these delta functions. So, so for this function now this is a t variable which is a continuous variable I can apply this uh, delta function. So, I can apply uh, a Laplace transform for this function if I apply formally what is a Laplace transform of uh, this f star of t as a function of s let us do this if I apply this. So, which is I have to consider basically only a part of the data of uh, f of t ok. So, originally for which you have a Laplace transform. So, if I do this uh, you have 0 to infinity f star of t e power minus s t dt. So, this is nothing but 0 to infinity this summation from n to z n is from 0 to infinity f of n t delta of t minus n t times e power minus s t dt. Assume that you can uh, do this uh, summation outside you have uh, f of n t comes out as a constant and this integration is from uh, f delta function e power minus s t delta function of t minus n t dt. So, this is nothing but n is from 0 to infinity f of n t times now, if you substitute t equal to n t e power minus s n t. So, this is your sum you get and you apply this Laplace transform ok. 
formally. So, you formally if you apply Laplace transform this is what you get. It is just a motivation to get your uh, Z transform. So, so what I do is uh, now I consider this uh, E power minus S T as a sum Z. If I choose this because S is a complex variable E power minus S T is a complex number. So, let Z be that then uh, Z be minus so E power S T then then what happens to your uh, Laplace transform of x f star of t. So, Laplace transform of f star of uh, t so function of s. <coughs> so, this is uh, if it is a function of s if I substitute here this is this will be function of z ok. Let me write this as a, a z transform of uh, let me write as a z transform of a z transform of uh, f star of t which is function of z. If I replace with z by this e power s t by z then this will be z transform Laplace becomes z, I am defining what is called z transform <coughs> ok. Whatever you get is uh, this one this is a function of z this is equal to or la, initially it is actually Laplace transform ok and which is a function of z. So, I am calling this as your z transform ok this is the definition of z transform z transform is. So, let me write this as a z capital z of f star of t as a function of z this is the definition as this we this is well defined as if you do this this is actually n is from 0 to infinity f of uh, n t times z power minus n. So, where is this valid? So, this is uh, valid from uh, z is a complex number. So, this is uh, mod z is what is the minimum thing is uh, mod z. So, this should be uh, mod z is uh, greater than e power uh, s t right e power uh, real part of s rather let me write real part of s times t ok. So, this is well defined for uh, real part of s wherever real part of s for which you have a Laplace transform exists. So, that real part of s when you consider the mod z what is left is a e power real part of s times t. So, this is this is exactly you have. So, beyond which beyond which uh, if uh, if this is finite uh, for uh, at e power st it is, is finite beyond also this is true ok because it is 1 by z type 1 by z power n ok. If it is uh, valid at z equal to z naught this this series is finite at z equal to z naught then mod z uh, z is uh, z is bigger than z is bigger than z naught this is always true because this is um, negative powers ok. So, in that sense you have this uh, this is valid for mod z is uh, bigger than this one. So, this is how you define your uh, z transform as a definition this is your z transform this is this is called z transform of z transform of of the sample sample uh, sample function or sample f star of t ok. So, what is my sample or sample function uh, of uh, of the of or a sample what is the sample I have f of 0 f of t f of 2 t and so on. So, this is a sequence as you see this is a sequence if I write like this f of n t is a sequence n is from 0 to infinity. Okay. So, this uh, in the communication uh, engineering you can see that uh, you, you, you have a data that is uh, recorded at, uh, at uh, specific intervals equal intervals you can uh, continually you uh, record you get as a discrete data. So, this discrete data you can uh, process it and then uh, you that is where uh, when you want to process uh, the transforms uh, on the discrete data you get these uh, finite uh, discrete transforms one such is this uh, z transform ok. So, we use this uh, z transform uh, as a definition and what is its uh, initially uh, what kind of functions what kind of data you have uh, this uh, z transforms exists and then uh, finally, so you have this is this is your uh, uh, transform uh, function uh, you have this transform is this is a complex valued function you will get it as your lap, uh, z transform. So, inverse transform is 
if I know this uh, if your uh, z uh, function of z this complex valued function is uh, this series then uh, if your complex valued function let us say some g of z if I can write like as a sum sum of z power minus n uh, n is from 0 to infinity then this, uh, Lapla this z inverse of this is actually equal to simply the constant sequence n is from 0 to infinity because this is these are the coefficients if is a n so I have a n's here okay. So, because z of a n is actually this that is given as g of z that if you sum it up that is that as some g of z okay. So, to see this inverse and uh, to see before I see this inverse you can see uh, you can first find the Laplace trans z transform of uh, some samples. So, some trivial samples some let us see some examples of uh, uh, z transforms. So, one is uh, constants okay. So, let us take uh, so let us always take uh, t equal to 1 first before I do this uh, let us let us fix as uh, without loss of general you can take it as t equal to 1. So, that your sequence so we uh, consider the sequence as uh, f of n as 1 for example your sequence f of 1 is a constant n is from 0 to infinity as a constant okay. If this is the case what is the z transform of uh, z transform of f of n of as a function of z which is equal to this series by the definition this series f of n t equal to 1 n is uh, 1. So, you have z power minus n. So, where is this valid? This valid this this is valid from mod z 1 by mod z is less than 1. So, that means mod z is greater than 1 this is is we know that this is finite is by geometric series okay. So, z transform of this is simply by uh, this is actually 1 plus 1 by z plus 1 by z square and so on is a geometric series. So, you have uh, 1 over 1 minus 1 by z. So, this is simply uh, z over z minus 1. So, which is valid from mod z greater than 1. So, that is your z transform for this sample. So, this is first example. So, let us do some more. Uh, if I choose your f n as uh, let us say a power n and a is not equal to 0. If f of n is this what is the z transform of f of n as a function of z uh, which is uh, sigma n is from 0 to infinity by definition you have uh, this is uh, a power n times z power minus n and this is again this is like uh, this is a series from 0 to infinity z by a uh, power minus n. So, this is valid z by a modulus is greater than 1. So, mod z is greater than a mod z is greater than mod a this is a even can be complex number. So, once you have this and again we have uh, 1 minus uh, 1 uh, this is again 1 over 1 minus z by a okay. So, you have uh, z by a or 1 by z. So, you have a by z. So, you have uh, z over z minus a and this mod z is greater than mod a. So, this is your z transform. So, like this you can go on uh, get this uh, let me do one more example before I close this. Uh, if uh, f of n is uh, simply n what is the z transform? So, then then z transform is z transform of uh, f n of z which is equal to sigma n is from 0 to infinity this is n times z power minus n. So, n equal to so this is actually equal to 1 by z plus 2 by z square plus 3 by z cube and so on. So, this is a series this you can think of as uh, you can take z out. So, what is this one this is actually equal to so I, I write directly uh, if I write right minus z times d d z of this series n is from 0 to infinity z power minus n. So, this is geometric series which is valid for uh, mod z is uh, greater than 1 okay. For greater than 1 this series is uh, finite we know that okay. This series is valid when this is the case and is uniformly convergent so you can do the term by term derivatives. So, if you do the term by term derivative what you get is minus n minus n comes out z z power minus n minus 1. So, that uh, z z goes so you left with only this one okay. So, so, this is exactly 
so you can uh, you can differentiate uh, this term by term and uh, what do you get so this is a minus z times d dz of this we know already that this is z power minus n is uh, uh, z divided by oh, z minus 1 so this uh, this is valid mod z greater than 1 so this is minus z times uh, differentiate with respect to z you have 1 by z minus 1 and you have plus z times 1 by z minus 1 square z minus 1 this minus uh, minus 1 so you have a minus z here minus z by z minus 1 square is its uh, derivative so you have minus z by z minus 1 and you have plus times z square by z minus 1 whole square so this you can write it as z minus 1 whole square and you have here z into z minus 1 and plus z square so you z square z square goes so you have z over z minus 1 whole square as mod z is greater than 1 this is your z transform of n f as a function of z okay so this is how you can get your uh, z transform of uh, <coughs> sample that is 1 2 3 and so on okay for the sequence uh, n so we can go on doing uh, given uh, sequence so we can find the z transform like this as a function of z it's a complex valid function which is usually valid outside some uh, interval so outside some circle okay so this is because uh, as you see you have derived this from the uh, laplace transform in the convergence so when you have a laplace transform which is valid the this is a over which uh, basically this is this is a, a laplace transform is a convergent integral is, is analytic function in this interval and if you consider this uh, line this line is transformed into a circle here okay a circle here because of this uh, z equal to e power st e power st e power st real part of s e power real part of s is uh, this is transformed to this circle here because of mod z okay mod z is greater than 1 so this line is transformed to the circle outside this circle this is actually transformed to this one this half plane that is where is analytic is actually transformed to outside this circle so in that sense that's in the for that reason you are always getting mod z is greater than some 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 uh, one or some constant for these simple functions so outside this uh, circle you have the complex valued function that is analytic function okay you have analytic function here so this is how you can get your uh, z transform uh, we will see in the next video uh, with many more examples and how to find its inverse also and then uh, its properties of this z transform so these properties are exactly uh, analogous to your uh, laplace transform exactly the same level at properties of uh, Laplace transform you will see its versions in the discrete versions in the z transform and then we make use of them uh, in the applications of solving uh, applications that is where uh, you solve uh, difference equations instead of solving differential equations you discretize the differential equation you get a difference equation or recurrence relation type of equations that is where you can use these z transforms and get your uh, solutions okay as a sequence thank you very much.